Do you feel overworked in youth ministry like you just can't get everything done? Well then stick around because today we're going to talk about the five top productivity killers. Hey, welcome to the Ministry Coach Podcast. My name is Jeff Lascola, and this is... Kristen Lascola. And this is your one-stop shop for everything youth ministry related. Whether you have two students or 200 students, we're here to come alongside you in your youth ministry journey. All right, so today we're talking all about those things that just kill productivity in our lives. Yes, we are. And Specifically work lives. Yeah, your work life. And I think there's this thing where we can think we're being overworked, but is it just a question of time management? The work, it, work smarter, not harder kind of thing? Yeah. And Chris Brown, our senior pastor, has been bringing that up a lot to our student ministries table lately to say, hey, if you feel overworked, could it possibly be that you are just not managing your time in the right way? And maybe there just needs to be some things, slight readjustments that could bring a little bit of order back to your life and that you could feel like you win the week. Like, mm. isn't that the best feeling when it's Friday and you feel like you've won the week? Mm -hmm. And so we're going to talk about five things today that can help you boost your product productivity or productivity <laughs> either uh, or productivity and yeah that, those little things that they're like kind of the most common ways you're gonna mess up your time yeah. management for me and i think for youth ministry or people that work at churches in general so number one is death by the meeting. <laughs> oh man let's have a meeting to see how many meetings we need to have this week meetings are time killers. Okay, so I've talked about this before. I am an Enneagram 3. You're an Enneagram 3. Mm -hmm. Efficiency is one of my love languages. Like, can we make this efficient? Time wasted, like, kills my soul. Yeah. And I think you can relate to that. Like, if there is something where I'm like, I'm never going to get this time back. This was the biggest waste of time. It just... I, it takes me a while to get over it. Yeah. Like I can't just be like, eh, yeah. <laughs> moving on. Like I just sit there and think like of all the things I could have been doing instead of that. And that's why like some people don't really mind if someone's flaky and doesn't show up. I mind a lot because I plan my whole day around getting to where I need to go mm. to meet you. I don't mind if somebody cancels. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Okay, so if they cancel. Then it frees things up like, to do other if stuff. If it's like I'm on my way and that I had to bummer, uh, yeah. do childcare and I made sure I rearranged my day yeah. to get there and I like whatever. If I spent time to make something happen and then it doesn't happen, right. it kills me. So I realized over COVID, I was so productive and it was because I wasn't having any meetings. Yeah. There were no meetings anymore. We were doing some things over Zoom, but it was like everyone was ready to get off Zoom. Nothing right. lingered. <laughs> so you just kind of did what you needed to do and then get off. And I remember thinking like, I can get, why can't I all of a sudden get all my work done <laughs> is because I wasn't having meetings. So I'm not, there is just no way to, to get rid of meetings all together. But one thing to help you boost your productivity of meetings is to assess if a meeting is necessary right. in the first place or couldn't have been an email. The Enneagram 3, there's like this Instagram I follow and it says the Enneagram 3 wants to know, could this meeting just have been an email? Right. Because a lot of times it can. Like we don't have to sit and chit chat about something. Just tell me when, where to be there and I'll be there. Like we don't have to talk about it. I feel that way about when someone calls me on the phone, it's like, couldn't this, couldn't you just text me? This? Yeah, I think most people. Or when you way. text somebody and then they immediately call you back, you're like, what I planet do you live now. on? Well, no, they, I never answer it. Well, I text back and say, just text me <laughs> like a normal person. <laughs> and then they, you lose a client and it's great. Um, so make sure your meetings are relevant, that they actually need to happen. And if you are in charge of the meeting, make sure they start and end on time. There is nothing worse than like, I plan my meet my day to a T. So mm. if the meeting goes, it's supposed to go from 10 to 11, I've got something at yeah. 11 five that I'm ready to do, you know, however long it takes me to walk from the meeting to my office or whatever I need to do. So 
respect people's time and make it efficient. Talk about what you're there to talk about. And then if people want to socialize and hang out after, that can be on them. But make the meeting about the meeting, mm-hmm. get the work done, and then spend time socializing with whatever margin they have, but that people are free to go after that. So stay on task. There's nothing worse than a poorly planned meeting of just like, Hey, let's just shoot the breeze for a while. You know, that's not a meeting that's called hanging out. (laughs) We don't need to schedule time to hang out. If we want to hang out, let's hang out. Some People do though. And I don't know what like assessment that like Enneagram or whatever Myers Briggs is that type of person. But when they're the ones leading the meeting, and it's just really casual. Let's just talk. And the threes are like, come on. Well, and today's episode isn't about how to build relationships at work. It's how to be productive. How to tear them down. So we're going to talk about the relationship aspect in a little bit. But if we're just focusing right now on being productive, yeah. like, yeah, meetings need to be efficient. And sometimes I hate to say it. I signal the like if people are running 10, 15 minutes overtime. Like I do get up and leave because I have, (laughs) and not to, not to prove a point, but because I have something waiting. Like I, I always have something waiting. Just say, Ooh, I think I have diarrhea and no one is going to question you (laughs) because no one would admit that if they didn't have it. (laughs) And I say, Oh man, poor thing. She's got to (laughs) go. My stomach really hurts. Oh, no. But then it's like whatever's waiting for me next. Like if it's a person or like, you know, then it's like, well, now I am late for them. And then for that. And so it's like if the meeting ends, it needs to end, you know. So meetings, 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 meetings. Clean it up. Clean those up. All right. Number two, another big time waster is overthinking things that actually don't really matter and spending a disproportionate amount of time overthinking these things that are just sort of like, okay, it doesn't really matter. So for example, I used to spend I'm not graphically um, talented. I don't have a whole lot of graphic <laughs> skills. So I clip art was made for you. It was or Google image search. I used to try to create really cool graphics for <laughs> games and sermon series and stuff. So I got pick monkey and it helps if you're not really like naturally talented and don't know like higher end you know, programs and stuff, but it was still a huge time suck and it would take me forever. And then I'd like rearrange stuff. I'm like, Ooh, maybe this picture, cause I wanted it to look good. And then I realized I just spent an hour doing a graphic for different fun, Dr. Dodgeball. (laughs) Like this is such a waste of time when number one, I could just do a quick Google image search of something or like just use word art or something and make it decent doesn't have to be perfect or give it to someone who is good at that so my intern now he's great at that kind of stuff i give it to him we have a tech guy who he can whip up stuff really quick sometimes i give it to him and i just realized man there are certain things that just really don't matter if there's somebody who can do it well efficiently and quickly great let's have a cool graphic Mm -hmm. if it's gonna take an hour of my time that i could have been doing other stuff and it's still gonna be mediocre it's time to move on yeah um sometimes with stuff like that if you tell yourself how long would an acceptable amount of time be for this to be completed and let's say it's like 15 minutes then you set your timer for 15 minutes and it's like whatever it looks like at the end of that it's done that's that yeah and you'd be that's surprised at how quick you can get something mm-hmm. and all of a sudden that perfect font doesn't matter and the coloring schemes it's like it's not that big of a deal right you know it's going to be up on the screen for like a second and i right. think that's the other kind of mind shift in this is sometimes what we think is really important or what we really want to showcase it's like not significant enough like to make to justify the time spent you know Mm. like when people are the artists and everything just has to be perfect but to anyone else it's like yeah it looks exactly the same right so it's like what are kids more interested in the game slide or the game itself. Right. Okay. Spend a little more time planning the game and perfecting that if you're going to spend time somewhere. So another time suck on this is if like you can't decide something and you're just brainstorming and running around in circles and hmm, maybe this or, Oh, I don't know. Then my strategy is just 
to not decide in that moment <laughs> and then come back to it later. Mm. And sometimes it's like, I can see something I didn't see the first time. But if I just feel like we're running around in circles and nobody can decide, and I don't know, and how about this? And what are the pros and cons? And we're just like, oh, it's getting dizzy and it's been a half hour. Let's just shelf it for now and come back. So yeah. sometimes that's the, that's the strategy of just stop what you're doing. Come back to it later. Checking it off the list sometimes isn't the priority. It's being efficient with your time. So overthinking things that don't matter. Number three, big time suck in youth ministry for productivity is not working off a to-do list. Mm. So Monday is my like set the stage for the week kind of thing. So I look at what I have this week and coming weeks. And I think what needs to be done this week for this week. And also what needs to be done this week for next week or the next week. So for example, I have a great big event coming up at the end of September and in October. Well, it's August right now, but I'm like, what do I need to do to start putting some things in motion for that? Well, I need to book because we're doing an all overnighter. So I needed to book all the venues. I needed to sign the contracts. I need to book the buses for my other event. I need to pick a theme. I need to order graphics and I need to start talking to the key people who are going to have roles in that. Mm -hmm. So those are like the things where it's like, let's look ahead but then now let's look at this week. Well, we need a game for this weekend. We need our message. We need blah, 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 whatever you have to do and prioritize tasks. So Monday, I have to work on everything for youth group because that happens on Tuesday. So let's make sure it's all done. Then by Wednesday, I can start working on the weekend. Then by Thursday, I have some free time. Let's work on events coming up. But if you don't have a plan and you just show up at work and you're not looking at your calendar and looking ahead, your work is not efficient. Mm. You're working a little bit more aimlessly. So always work off of a to-do list based on your calendar. So your calendar dictates the to-do list so that you can make sure that you are not surprised of like, oh my gosh, it's a week before an event and I haven't even started printing permission slips right. or booking transportation. Um, that's such a rookie move to wait and wait and wait and let events sneak up on you. If you have your calendar done and you're basing your to-do list off of your calendar, nothing should ever sneak up on you. That's just sort of bad form and that's okay. Maybe your first year, mm -hmm. but beyond that, there's really no excuse for events sneaking up on you and not being prepared for them. We do have an episode that we did on yearly planning. So if you're in that phase right now, wanting to get your yearly plan done before the end of this year, for next year, go ahead and check that out. I'll link it down below or in the description of the podcast. And then we also did an episode, now that I'm thinking about this, about how to get more done in five-minute increments. Yeah, that was a good one. It'd be really helpful for you some know, of these things. And for this one too, you know what I thought of like on my to-do list, I have a whole section on there of things that are what like things I'm going to delegate. Mm. So I have my list of what I'm going to do. And then I start like looking through it and I'm like, actually, this is better suited for this person. This I'm going to pass to him. This I'm going to pass to her. And then I start figuring out who is going to do what. And then I send them their lists for the mm. week. So my intern, she comes in on Wednesday and I'll say, Hey, here's your list for the week. I'm there. So we can work on things together or I can answer questions or help her, but she's responsible for making that call or booking that bus or whatever. And then, you know, my other intern, I'll give him like all my graphic needs of like, Hey, let's play this game this weekend. Could you make a slide for it? Could you put everything into pro presenter? And so making sure you're managing yourself. And then if there's anyone underneath you that you also manage, make sure you're managing their to-do list as well, because you know, the buck stops with you. Mm. So make sure you're checking up on their projects, but See if there's anything on your to-do list that is a no-brainer of delegated yeah. type of job. Did I just hit you? You do it a lot. When I okay. gestured. <laughs> it was more of a flick. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right. Another big time suck. I think we've talked about this before. Number four, emails, emails, yeah. emails. They are never ending. So you, here's what I think. You could literally spend all day doing emails all day long. And for me, this is a really hard one to stay on top of. I think we filter and go through and try to figure out what is urgent and what can wait and all of that. But emails can really suck your time. And 
one strategy that we've talked about before, I think, is if you broke each 90 minute work cycle down. Okay. So if you have an hour and a half chunk of time and here's, here's a good way to make sure you're working and then dipping in and out of your email. So they don't become this huge overwhelming project. So you tackle your to-do list that we just talked about for an hour. Maybe it's, you're working on one project for a whole hour, or maybe you're able to get a few things done, but it's like one hour head down, AirPods in, nobody talk to you, get it done hard for an hour. Okay. Then you take 20 minutes and check email. Mm. And so, you know, and this has really helped me is like, I have to know when this is going to end. Right. Otherwise <laughs> I'm just like I can look and it's been an hour and I'm still checking and responding to emails. So 20 minutes is emails. Then that leaves 10 minutes for the cycle to end. So then I go and take a break, get something to drink, chat with a coworker. You did mention this before, but I think your time increments were different the last time. Well, and it's the arbitrary. The idea is the same. Yeah, yeah, it's arbitrary. I like 90 minutes Sometimes, sometimes I like one hour, sometimes it just depends. But the point of it is, is that you're allotting time for different things. So then that last 10 minutes, you take a break or so, whatever. Okay, this be. is something that I always run into. What do you do when you're like, let's say you're on your 20 minute email cycle and you're at the 19th minute and you open up that email and you're like, Ooh, this is a longer response. Do you say, well, I'm just going to stop wherever I'm at at 20 minutes? Do you say, I'm just going to stop now because this is going to require too much of me? Or do you say, well, I opened it. Now I'm going to respond even no. if it takes me 15, 20 minutes. No, I'd save it. I would see what the next email was. And if I could do that <laughs> one in one minute, I'd take it. If not, I would save it. It's okay. like... Again, because then if you, oh, well, now I open this one. It's just like, no, when it's been 20 minutes, it's been 20 minutes. Time to move on because you have other things. That's what I would do. You do whatever you yeah. want. But I would say, no, I'm not going to dedicate another 10, 15 minutes to email. What if you've been, what if you've been working at it for 10 minutes and then all of a sudden and time's up? And what if up? Superman no, came I, in and told you I to do always, it? I can't leave it unfinished. I will always finish it, even though that might push me further along in my time schedule. I just think if I looked at the clock and I knew I couldn't finish it because then I'd be like <gasps> hurrying and I'd probably not give the response that I wanted. Sometimes I've found that if I feel under the gun, I respond to people differently than mm. if I were to just have the time to really kind of dive in and wordsmith and reword instead of like, and I just want to say that I did it. You know, <laughs> I, I don't, I don't want to give a poor thumbs response. Up. Thumbs you know? up. Thumbs up. Okay. And then number five, and this one is hard because our job is very relational, but a big time suck. It's just the way it is, is chit chat. Yeah. And I think we have to be careful here because we can't be the kind of people who close our door, never talk to anybody like, oh, I'm here to work and that's it. That will really kill the chemistry on your team, your, your youth ministry team and the church staff team. Like nobody likes the person who puts pro product. I'm having a hard time saying productivity, produce, product, productivity, 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 productivity over people. So <laughs> nobody like that kind of person, it's they're like a little bit of a turnoff because you can tell you're bothering them and you're an interruption and they're like, uh-huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? And so I don't want to be that person, but I also don't want to, I'm not paid to socialize for eight hours. Right. You know, that's not my job. So it's like, okay, then where is that line between I'm productive, but I'm also friendly and building relationships and there's morale and all of that kind of stuff. So I always say like, maybe it's about a 75, 25% sort of thing. We have a, like we have an open office. And so kind of the signal that I'm busy, don't bother me. I can't banter with you right now is if you have headphones, AirPods, mm -hmm. whatever in your ears, it means like that's the same as me closing my door. Over the ear, Bose, uh, what do they call it? 
noise canceling. No, everybody knows. Yes. Ear, as, as opposed to the ones when you have like just earbuds in, it's like, oh, I didn't yeah, even see that. Yeah, someone will just, well, or they don't look at you and they'll just start talking and I can sort of tell and I'll like take it out. Like, wait, were you talking to me? I'm sorry. So sometimes we like make an announcement. I'm putting my headphones in. I got a project I'm working on. And then so, everyone has to stop and go like, wait, what did you say? <laughs> yeah, really. So make sure you're not being either one, like the person who can't stop talking and is distracting everyone, but also that you're not the jerk who's unfriendly <laughs> and cold and all of that, but trying to strike that balance. So that's why, like, if you were to look at that 90 minute work cycle, like we were talking about, like if you use the last kind of 10 minutes of each one of those, as long as you weren't bothering other people who are trying to be productive, but you know, take a lap around the office or see who wants to go grab a cup of coffee real quick, or I don't know, whatever it might be. But I've noticed like sometimes I'll, I'll work from home because I'm way more productive because being at work is so fun. Mm. You know, all we want to do is hang out with people and chat and whatever. And then I'll be like, it's been two hours. I've like got nothing done yeah. because I was catching up with this person about the weekend and there's value in all of that. There for sure is. But again, what question did we start with? If you feel overworked, if you feel like you're never winning your week, if you feel like you have too much to accomplish, I think we let's get out of this cycle of complaining that I'm overworked. I'm overworked and look inward and say, am I managing my time? And I'm, I being responsible for my own time because that's our responsibility. Yeah. Like as a worker, you know, and Chris Brown, he like brings up this pretty sobering thought. And I don't know if you've ever thought about your job this way, but our paycheck comes from the tithes mm -hmm. of the people that attend the church. And sometimes I think about that and I'm like, dang, like if someone's giving their hard earned money as a tithe to the church to give in faith, how would they hope that I was working? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, oh, I just gave this so that Kristen can just like mess around 75% of the time. And then like, uh, uh, oh, we need a sermon. I'll just YouTube something really quick and then we'll play dodgeball again, you know, or is it like, no, they're entrusting me. They have faith in, in the church and, um, you know, it's purpose and it's role in their lives and their families' lives and the community and, mm -hmm. you know, what God has asked us to do. And they're like supporting that they're supporting God's work. And so, for me, that's a sobering thought of like, am I working at my utmost yeah. to honor the people who are giving in faith? Because hmm. that's hard. It's hard to give every week. And, you know, those tithes are given in faith. And so I think that sort of have, has changed for me a couple of things. Number one, my level of excellence that I try for in my job, because I want to make the tithers proud, you know, and God proud, obviously, but it's like, I really want to make sure I have something to show for my full-time job. Right. You know, you guys are, but at the me. same time, don't kill yourself and thinking I can't ever take a vacation or a break or anything because, oh my gosh, all these people are paying my salary and expect so much. Yeah. From me you could and, be too hard on yourself. Right. And that's what Chris was saying. He's like, sometimes I kind of fall into that of like, I like over, overthink it. And I like try to be like too, like I, I can't stumble. I can't right. mess up. I well, got to Yeah. You probably shouldn't stumble. Well, but... not stumble, <laughs> like not I morally, but I mean, like I want to do such a good job, yeah. you know, and like put so much pressure on myself and yeah, obviously that's unhealthy too. We can go to any unhealthy extreme, but to just keep in mind, you know, where that money comes from, you know, it's, it's a big deal. And it, it just gives me like, just motivation. Like I want to do a good job. I want to be an efficient worker. Right. You know, these are people's tithes that they're giving to the church. So like do them proud, you right. know, work, work appropriately for the money you're being, you're being given. Yes. Okay. Be a hard um, worker. Hey, put down in the comments below how you, Tell your office mates that you are working and not to be bothered because that can be a delicate balance, you know, and because and if someone's like 
got their headphones on, people might think like, oh, so like you just can't be bothered, you know? And yeah. So what what do you guys use as your signal? Or do you just flat, do you have that relationship that you say, hey, everybody, I really need to get work done. So don't bother me. Yeah. Sometimes I'll say like, hey, I'm uh, putting in my headphones now. I'm going to be sermon prepping. So if you start talking to me, I won't hear you. If you need something, you're going to have to come over and tap me. And I think that means like, hey, don't bother me unless totally <laughs> necessary. Uh, don't speak unless thing. spoken to. Right, right. All right. You know, and you might, sorry, we can be done after this, but you no, might we can't. just need to find a quieter spot yeah. too. Sometimes, the like, I think it was last week, I had to just take my laptop and go out into the hallway, like where nobody was because there was so people were collaborating. So it was like good stuff. They were collaborating so much in the office on something. I could not concentrate. I couldn't, right. I like kept reading the same thing over and over and over again. And I was like, I am getting nowhere. And so I just had to take my laptop out and go to a quieter spot. So can maybe, you do work in like a, the white noise office like space or like a, or like a coffee shop where it's like there's hustle and bustle, but it's not really specific. Yeah, I can. Yeah, I usually do pretty well on that, yeah, but it can like also that. be a distraction sometimes too. Speaking of distractions, this has nothing to do with the question of the day, but what is an embarrassing way that you've gotten injured? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we were having this staff um, contest for our Christmas party where we had to submit videos. Like, it was like submitting <laughs> oh, Christmas saying. videos. I think I know what you're going to say. And uh, we had a really small staff at the time. It was just me and the high school pastor. We were doing Dancing with the Stars, <laughs> yeah. and we were doing a song. I forget what the song was, and we, like like choreographed all these like partner dances and then there'd be like judges like giving scores and stuff and i was doing these spins and i dislocated my knee and i <laughs> fell on the floor and uh, our sound guy started laughing really hard at me because he just thought i tripped but i fell because my knee dislocated and i was on the ground like and they're like oh my gosh what happened but i felt like i looked like a buffoon because it was during the spins and there was music and we we're all in costumes i look like a uh, idiot and idiot <laughs> I have a wealth of times that I've done stupid things and gotten injured. But one that comes to mind is I think I was seven and I was dancing on top of a desk. <laughs> I like in, where this is going. In, in uh, my sister's room. I was just being obnoxious. <laughs> I may or may not have had pants on. I don't remember. It <laughs> in was either, my version, it was, you don't. <laughs> it was either underwear or or not, but I somehow lost balance and I kind of like cartwheeled off and landed like on my head, shoulder, and then like kind of hit, and yeah, <laughs> hit into the dresser and it just you just feel that much more ridiculous if when you you're get doing hurt something while dumb. you're dancing like mine and yours. <laughs> That I think it's like the most awkward, cringy, right. like because you're like all crazy, and then you like. <laughs> well, I think I was annoying hurt. my sister too, especially if I was naked. I'm sure, but <laughs> I think I was just trying to be a, like just obnoxious, and then I ended up getting you know, and then and then crying while you're just wearing your underwear. Or I don't know, but it's just that much is that much worse. So, uh, put your example in the comments below if you're watching this on YouTube. No comment of the day, but we wanted to give a shout out to our newest Patreon supporter, RJ Orison. RJ. Thank you. You did it. <laughs> Woo! We really appreciate the support, RJ. And if any of you want to support this ministry monetarily, you can go to patreon.com slash ministry coach, and you can check out some of the options that are there. But again, we do thank you, RJ. We really appreciate that. Thank you, RJ. We really appreciate that. All right, you guys. Uh, thank you for watching and listening, and we will see, see you, you next, next time. time. That could be getting you to not get your work done. Then stick around, because today we're going to talk about the time... <laughs> Bye. Do you feel overworked in youth ministry and that you just can't get everything done?